Wake me up when September ends. This is Threatwire. A new Chromium Zero Day was patched by the team at Google on August 21st, 2024. The Zero Day, known by CVE 2024-7971, is a type confusion vulnerability in the V8 JavaScript and WebAssembly engines of Chromium that was discovered by the team at Microsoft. Based on measured metrics, Microsoft attributes the exploitation of the CVE to the Citrine Sleet threat actor. Citrine Sleet is a North Korea-based group that targets cryptocurrency communities for financial gain. The Chromium CVE was specifically used as a part of the exploit chain. Starting with what Microsoft assumes to be social engineering, targets visit a threat actor controlled vulnerable website and using CVE 2024-7971, remote code execution is achieved. After the RCE exploit achieved code execution in the sandboxed Chromium renderer process, shellcode containing a Windows sandbox escape exploit and the FUD model rootkit was downloaded and then loaded into memory. The Sandbox Escape exploited CVE 2024-38106, a vulnerability in the Windows kernel that Microsoft fixed on August 13th, 2024, before Microsoft discovered this North Korean threat actor activity. The FUD module rootkit allows for detection evading kernel access, which is in this case used to interrupt security mechanisms of the system via direct kernel object manipulation. As mentioned earlier, an update for this version of Chromium has already been released. Indicators of compromise are shared on the Microsoft blog linked below. The team behind the OSCP certification has released an update to the OSCP. For those who don't know the OSCP or the Offensive Security Certified Professional Exam, it is a hacking certification that is used to prove the holder's practical penetration testing skills. Starting November 1st, 2024, a modifier will be added to the OSCP title, a plus symbol. While prior to this, an OSCP certification did not expire, the plus modifier represents the recency of the examination. The OSCP plus will now expire after three years from being issued. The OSCP certificate will still be valid, however, the PLUS version will expire. To maintain the PLUS version of the certification, the holder must retake the exam. Holders who take the OSCP exam will receive the PLUS version as well as the general OSCP certification. In the FAQ, OFSAC, the company that administers the exam, explains their reason for the change. OSCP Plus not only reflects the holder's expertise in cybersecurity, but also signifies that they are up to date with the latest industry standards and practices. The Plus designation highlights a learner's commitment to continuous learning and staying current in a field that is constantly evolving. They do put the reminder that the OSCP certification has no expiration date and continues to be valid indefinitely. So for those who hold it now, you're okay. The team at Chexmarks has discovered a series of malicious NPM packages targeting Roblox developers. These NPM packages utilize forms of typo squatting, specifically brand jacking and combo squatting, in combination with star jacking to convince vulnerable developers to install malicious packages that can be assumed to be related to the main package. The package that was used in this malware campaign is the noblox.js package, a JavaScript wrapper for the Roblox REST interface. Four packages were discovered by the Chexmarks team to be of bad faith. noblox.js-async, noblox.js-thread, noblox.js-api, and noblox.js-threads. Upon being installed via NPM on the target, the package utilizes the NPM post install hooks to execute malware. The malware steals Discord tokens, shut down antivirus services, manipulates Windows security, and downloads more executables from malicious GitHub repos. As of writing the story, the malware holding repos are still active. The final stage of the malware involves deploying the KSAR rat, giving the attacker control over the infected system. Why Roblox, you're probably asking. Roblox has a player population of 70 million active daily users, so developing for the platform is highly lucrative. As an aside, a Roblox minigame has also been trending on social media called Dress to Impress. But this supply chain attack campaign has been in the works for over a year. 
Games that allow the community to create and control via code are great entry points for getting youth excited about coding. But let's remember to teach our youth about responsible package management and about software security early on. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of September 2nd, 2024. If you want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. I know this is about a month late, but I published my DEF CON vlog on my personal channel, which I'll link down below. Over the next month on my personal accounts, I'm going to be creating more content that is educational regarding coding and software and security, and it would mean the world to me to see y'all engage with it. You can find me everywhere online at Ending with Ali. I appreciate the support as my online presence goes through this metamorphosis of sorts. So thank you so much for taking the time and watching this. Um, anyways, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.